The critical court test for the new health care law is just uh, three days away, but as the attorneys general prepare their case, insurance companies are already raising rates because of the new law. We have a doctor here to tell us why they're doing this. Dr. Sridhar Pottarazzi joins the company as a frequent guest here. Doctor, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Right. Now, the private health insurers say we're going to raise premium rates mm -hmm. 1 to 9%. Right. They say they're doing it because of new Obamacare. Is that accurate? There's three things that are really driving up cost. One is they've got to cover the people on COBRA who are out of a job, who still need to keep coverage. The second piece is people with pre-existing conditions, anything under the sun that they've got to cover. It's about 300,000 folks there. And about and all of the people under the age of 26, about another million people there. So let's start with pre-existing conditions. As of now, that facet of health care reform has kicked in. It has. So if I come to you, if you're an insurer, I come to you, I say, I'm awfully sorry, I've got terminal this, terminal that. Got cover to cover it. You've got You've to cover got it. to cover it. And you're talking about, about $10 billion in cost between now and the next three years just to factor in all of the people okay. under the age of 26 and pre-existing conditions for so all these, these new extra people under costs. the rules. Oh, they have to billion. spread them around so everybody has got to pay for this. Absolutely. Now, Catherine Sebelius, Health and Human Services Secretary, has written a letter to the private health insurers and saying, hey, don't do this. This is outrageous. You should not be blaming Obamacare for these increases in premiums. Now, that seems to be an awfully high-pressure tactic for the administration to be saying. But they've tried this before, and it's failed. They've tried this any number of times, and the insurers don't need to respond because they know that the government has no means of getting access to all of the discounts and the assumptions and the information that the insurers are using in terms of charging people. But it would seem like if the insurers are not allowed to charge more because they've got all these extra costs coming at them, is the government trying to drive them out of business? Is that the subplot here? Is it? I think it's a hidden agenda. I mean, ultimately, that will have to be the de facto and say, look, we've tried everything we possibly can. Rates are still going up. Insurers are out of control. So plan B, come through the side door and say, well, let's mandate everybody and go to a public option. But will we have enough time? We've only got a couple of years and we're already hearing a lot of backlash with people who hate the law. The numbers are staggering okay. right now. Here's one last one for you. I believe that today, is it, I think it's Florida. Florida. The hearings begin on the constitutionality. That's right. Of various states' attorneys general. 19 of them. Right? 19 of them. They are saying you may not impose a mandate on individuals that they must buy health insurance. The hearings start today? The hearings start today. When do we get a decision? I think it's still going to be a while. Virginia is a little bit ahead of the pack, and the feeling right. is, is that, you know, Virginia made a major ruling that they can't dismiss the case. I think the feeling is, is that they may go all the way to the Supreme Court. But it's the whole issue of overstepping the bounds of, of but, commerce and forcing people. But if the courts rule that that is indeed unconstitutional, that unravels all oh, of the health care reform. It's finished. Absolutely. I really? mean, I think that you're looking at a massive uproar because the states... Remember, half of the people that are coming on to insurance, the 30 million people, half of them are going to go into Medicaid, which means the states, even though the government is stepping in, the states are still going to have to foot some of that bill, and they're really scared about that. The second is the exchanges. So the states have got a lot at stake themselves that they don't have the money for, and hence the revolt. Dr. Sridhar Padaratsu, always filling us in with good information. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate it.